Yo, yo, everyone. JD the Gamer here, and we are here first day of our second round of the RTA Fall Classic Tournament. I got my man over here, Warlock, to the side. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well, man. I'm excited to be here. Excited to see what uh, this new day and the new set of rules brings. Absolutely. So we are here. It is the first battle of the second round. It is going down between Electra and Drunk Dragon. Remember that Electra was fortunate enough to slide right into the second round due to that individual taking someone else's spot that could not participate in the tournament. Mm -hmm. So this will be the first time we see this person in this tournament. And unlucky, though, going up against one of the heavy hitters in Drunk Dragon. But mm -hmm. with the new rules set up for this round, only three elements that you can use max. How do you think this could play out? Um, well, I think it's going to definitely pose uh, uh, some different strategies. People are going to be doing things a little bit differently than they did in that first round. Obviously, they they will be able to use more, you know, three plus not fives if they want this time. However, with the element restriction, you know, not everyone has a whole bunch of not fives of every element. So I do still think we're going to see some interesting units uh, that may not be natural five stars. But I also think we're going to be some see some interesting blends of cops uh, comps once people get those three elements out of the way and it restricts what they can pick. Absolutely. So we are live here right now with this first battle. Drunk Dragon gets the first pick, decides to bring out that Wusa, and now that's more of the normal comps you see. Wusa is one of those units mm -hmm. that gets picked a lot first, and Electra follows up with a Ganymede, which is another unit we see. So now that that Nat 5 restriction is lifted, we're going to see a lot of main units being used but it looks as though drunk dragon is already locked in now with water mm -hmm. light and dark as his three elements mm -hmm. and yeah as you'll see here you can obviously overlap elements we've got light on on each side as long as you don't pick more than three yourself it's all good so it looks like Electra's going to be taking fire as the third element with beretta there and then another wind Ooh. deciding to go time. against the brian and it's bringing Bernard, so trying okay. to get that first okay. turn, am I right? Absolutely, yeah, and we see another light and water pick from Drunk Dragon over here, going with the Huadam, and Beth, that is a pretty that is a pretty heavy comp right there. He's got a lot going for him with that comp, Drunk, Drunk Dragon does. Absolutely, and if you think about it, if if Beth gets through and Huadam, Beth has a 44% mm -hmm. arena HP leader skill, so it's going to be that much harder to get rid of that Huadam. It's going to be interesting to see what Electra chooses here to, to round this off. Oh, okay. Decides to Goes bring the, the Trevor. Yeah. I think and that the might Trevor be the first... does get banned. So, <laughs> so, so with goes... Trevor being banned, do you think, do you feel that there's enough damage on Electra's side to try to maintain this ba this battle? It looks to me like Electra is going to be relying mostly on control. Um, other than the dots from Beretta and, you know, just the auto attacks from everyone else, there is the defense break from Bella. But without having a heavy hitting unit to follow up with that defense break, I don't know if it's going to be enough damage, especially with, you know, the counter control coming from Ragdoll. Absolutely. And here comes Beth. That is a very fast Beth right now to be mm -hmm. able to outspeed Ganymede and Bernard. Wow. That Beth has to be on a swift set, I, I would imagine, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, almost absolutely, just due to the fact that it outsped both the Ganymede and Bernard. So just like we said in the beginning of the match, Electra was lucky enough to get into this tournament, but unfortunately is going up against a heavy favorite right here in Drunk Dragon. Mm -hmm. So down to that Bernard only, decides not to quit out, which I think is smart, allows yourself to... Try to figure something out for the next round. But, sure, sure. But Drunk Dragon makes quick work right there wow. of Electra to pull out the game one match. What do you think, if you were in Electra's shoes right now, what mm -hmm. do you think is possible for her to do to try to force a match three? Um, I think the best thing she can do uh, is uh, she had the right idea, definitely taking the Ganymede and the attack bar boost as well. Um, she chose her damage unit a little bit late, uh, which which allowed that did allow Drunk Dragon to you know just go ahead and ban that unit, that Trevor straight out, and then you know even if um, Electra would have been able to get the CC combo going, there may not have been the damage to follow up even with the defense break from Bella. So I think that uh, the biggest thing is maybe get another damage unit in there to assure. That you're going to have the DPS. I guess it's look, looking like she's going with the, the double sylphs now. 
Yeah, she's still sticking with that Beretta, mm -hmm. which if you can get Beretta's skill off and get some dots going, then you might be able to control. And I'm sure a lot of people have Beretta built on Despair, so maybe you get mm -hmm. lucky RNG on your side, you get a couple of stuns. Looks as though Drunk Dragon is staying true with what he picked with the Wusa, Beth, and Darien. How mm. will Electra respond to this? Decides to bring Galleon and Aaron. A Galleon? Ooh. And very, very unusual uh, pairing of monsters, I would say, there. Yes, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not quite sure where what her approach is here. Um, and decides to bring the Wind Lit. So at this point... Well... I think Tyron is one of those um, dark horses right now because you don't know, is, mm -hmm. is Tyron built on despair? Is he built on attack? Is he built with HP? You don't know. Right, right. And Drunk Dragon decides to stay with only two elements, says, I don't even need that third mm -hmm. element. I got this <laughs> under control, man. <laughs> yeah, this looks... This looks a little bit, a little bit like a, a little bit different than the matchup we saw in this last match from them. But I'm, I'm still not sure. We don't see a whole lot of damage on the side of Electra. There is, you know, the the Sylph, but his damage is so random with that second skill being random targeting. And you should have known already that Beth was going to get that first turn, right? Um, mm -hmm. and the fact, and you should have also known that all their units had will for the most part, coming into it. Mm -hmm. Does get a, a little bit of CC going here, but, you know, already got that Galleon out of the picture. Everyone's really low. There's no sustain. And then, as I said earlier, you know, the random targeting of that skill from the Lich makes it difficult to rely on when you need to really pin down one specific unit. Absolutely. And, and another issue is, I see that she started, or Electra started attacking the Theo, but again, if you don't get that Hua Dam down, it doesn't matter. That Theo's mm -hmm. going to survive. Absolutely. So it looks as though Drunk Dragon has the definitive edge right now and um, advantage, and now the Wind Lich is gone. I don't think there's going to be any damage coming from Electra's side. Um, you know... I just I just don't think that she that that Electra brought enough sustain or damage to try to survive mm -hmm. this battle. And Drunk might have just been Drunk Dragon might have just been too much too much for her to handle at this point. Yeah, we've seen uh, from the first match, you know, the Drunk Dragon is definitely one of our one of our big dogs, one of our heavy hitters. So uh, that paired with the fact that he's already had some experience in this tournament. And, um, and you know, just looking at his units, all those RTA auras, he obviously is, it does what he's doing right now a lot. So uh, he's, he's a tough competitor. And um, just quick props for, to Electra for, for bringing it up against him and, and coming into this tournament, you know, not as one of the initial competitors, but uh, coming in kind of out of nowhere and then uh, coming through, starting off in the second round. You know, it's not easy to do. Absolutely, because you're coming into this completely blind you didn't mm -hmm. you haven't seen what the other competitors brought to the table and she and you probably didn't know that you were getting thrown into the to the lion's den with drunk dragon yeah no or kidding. should i say the dragon den yeah. um, <laughs> so tough battles for electra tough tough lineup tough draw for her um mm -hmm. drunk dragon did what he's what what we all expected um, went ahead and put the foot down, took care of it quick, <laughs> moves on to the third round, and we were going to keep this going. We have our next match coming up. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Here comes the next one. Yo, yo. What's up, everyone? How's it going, Warlock? How you doing this lovely evening? Man, I'm doing fantastic. I'm very happy to be here. Very excited for round two. How about yourself? Oh, I'm feeling great. I feel... I feel full of energy. I'm just bottled up, ready to explode on this round two right now. <laughs> I cannot Excellent. hold the hype. As we can see, the audience is hyped right now. They're all ready. They're screaming. They're saying, <laughs> JD, for life, JD. And it's awesome right now. It's awesome feeling, man. It's awesome feeling. I'm, I'm glad that we're able to bring this to the community like this. Um... And man, do we have a full schedule of matches for you guys tonight. Mm -hmm. We are getting through the entire second round tonight. 
tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We're not playing around. We have five matches. Supposed to be six, but we have a little something to show you guys later. But it's supposed to be five matches, or it's going to be five matches tonight. Mm -hmm. Everybody's ready to do work. So, in this round, second round, no more than three attributes being used. So, if you pick Fire, Wind, Dark, you are locked in. Those last two picks of yours have to be a Fire, Wind, or Dark unit. Again, just like every round, if you mess up once, you get a mulligan. You have to pick the same units until that monster where you broke the rule comes into play, and then you can make mm -hmm. your, your difference there. Anything to add to that rule, Warlock? Uh, no, don't think so. Just, yeah, make sure you don't go over those over those three elements, and uh, it's okay if you and your opponent have the same elements, because obviously we've only got five to work with. Absolutely. Now, I would show you guys the bracket now, but there has been something that happened already, so I'm going to save that for the end, <laughs> towards the end, after we get these five battles out of the way. We're going to jump right into our first matchup tonight is between Doom56 and Ken XXY. What do you think or what do you suspect is going to happen? What are, your, what are you foreshadowing on this battle, War? Um, well, what I foreshadow is that this is going to be a really, really good match. We saw in the first match that these two guys are both very strong competitors. They both have very interesting boxes and very diverse strategies. So it looks like we're already right here into it. Oh, yeah. We're jumping straight into this. We're not Alrighty. playing around. <laughs> and here we go. Doom starts out with two water units with Varad and Bastet. Ken mm -hmm. decides to follow that with his water units of his own with Orion and Wusa. Now has water and wind. Doom looks like he's going with water and dark at the moment. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. We see Ken's Icarus again. I know he took Icarus in the last uh, yesterday as well. In his first in his first round fights. Whoa, 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 ladies and gentlemen, we have our first mess up right there. One, Ken has taken water, wind, dark, and mm -hmm. light. That is four. Four right there. We are starting off uh -oh. out of the gate with an issue right now. Please, ladies and gentlemen, we uh -oh, <laughs> we have to go to an emergency stoppage right now. Quit out the match. Everyone, I know chat, the audience is going crazy right now, yelling, <laughs> no, 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 no. So <laughs> we are going to restart. Ken now has a first warning. If he messes up again, the, uh, Warlock, how devastating would this be if he messed up again? And oh. Luke gets DQ'd from the tournament. Man, it would it would be brutal. It would be brutal without even you know getting to fight. Uh, I know he's been preparing hard for this. Uh, I'm sure you know there's just some nerves. Not quite sure what's going on, but uh, but yeah, that would be absolutely devastating. Not even seeing him get to go because we know this is going to be a close match. So they have to pick the exact same. Uh we so. So, okay, so here, here's part of the, the, the little intricacies of the rule here. Ken did pick the same five units, kind of, but, mm -hmm. but, but chose to bring Gemini up forward a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, Doom is, is, is going to be fighting this, this, this team right here. Hopefully, they are both okay with this. If they are not, we will talk to them after this match and find out. Honestly, Warlock, it is kind of up to Doom in this situation whether or not he will allow this because technically according to the rule, mm -hmm. Ken should not have had Gemini because that was his last pick. Correct, so it yes. should have been one of the previous unit, uh, one of the previous attributes. Right, right. So it is going to be completely up to Doom after this fight and we will pause momentarily after this fight to confirm. But it's completely up to Doom whether or not he wants to go ahead and say it's fine, let's keep fighting. If he decides that no, that is against the rules, which technically it is, then Ken XXY might have just ousted himself on a technicality. Ooh, and how rough that would be, man. It looks like we'll have to just let this fight play out and see what see what the contestants do afterwards. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I, I am taking a glance and I'm listening out with my with my little ears to the audience and it seems mm -hmm. that they want to let him through. But again, no matter how much you yell and scream, it is ultimately up to the competitor and the right. judges and we are the judges. 
Right, I don't right. know about you, War, but I am I am under the impression that I am willing to allow it to go through as long as Doom is okay with it. Yes, I, I would say it's the same for me. Um, if, if Doom has an issue with it, you know, we will have to adhere to our rules. But if it's all right with him, uh, because other than that order, uh, Ken did pick the same units. Um, if that's all right with Doom, if he wants to let that pass, then we will go ahead. But, uh, but yes, as you said, we will need to adhere to our rules if that's what Doom wants to do. It looks as though Doom is taking the first victory, though. Mm-hmm. No matter what happens here. So, again, it is completely up to Doom whether or not he wants to continue this. So as soon as, and there it is, the Mars mm. goes down, we are going to go live to us talking here because I need <laughs> to ask if Doom is okay with this. All right. Yeah, I think um, you know. I think all the all the technicalities, regardless, that was definitely a really good match. Uh, we saw we saw some interesting picks on both sides. We definitely saw a really strong comp there from both of them. Um, I was a little bit surprised Ken didn't bring out the Light Dragon, uh, but you know that could have been due to the fact that uh, we know that he's got that up his sleeve now after he used it in the first match. Uh, maybe he was waiting to see if that was going to make an appearance in the second or third games. Ladies and gentlemen, breaking news live from the waiting room of the contestants. Doom has spoken to me and said it oh. is okay with him. So we are right. moving on to match two. He All was right. perfectly okay with that. Ken XXY, don't mess up again, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we see three three water units already on each side now. So Doom has a do you with water being so heavy? I'm kind of shocked that I haven't seen a Lucian yet. Yeah, no, definitely. I was going to say, um, you know, the Charlotte pick is definitely a, a solid, smart pick here um, against a comp like that. But it looks like Kin's got got the Orion going through it. And unless that Bastet's, uh, you know, quick enough to ask me the Orion, Kin might get first turn here, which could... He could get something going, you know, he's got Icarus. Icarus has that third skill, that strong nuke. Yeah, absolutely, be... absolutely. If Kin can get that first move and Icarus can maybe knock off one unit right away from doom which could mm -hmm. completely change the game right there and then if it forces a match three and ken somehow pulls it out will doom be second guessing that that, ability, <laughs> that that moment that he had to choose to let him through or not i don't know i guess we'll have to see but it does look like icarus is gonna get to go here who do you think he goes for i'd say maybe charlotte yeah charlotte and and oh, that is yep, a dead charlotte enough. All right, so there goes a big, big chunk of the damage on the side of Doom. It's going to be relying pretty much on the attack damage from Annabelle, I think, to put the numbers out now. Yes, did you happen to see right there how much heal Annabelle did? Because that would kind of determine how much attack Annabelle has on her. I missed I it. I didn't see, see it. Yeah, I didn't see the exact number. So and with their health bars being where they were at, I'm not, I'm not too sure. Unfortunately, though, for Doom... Um, Hathor only was able to sleep one unit mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. Icarus. So very fortunate for Ken right now. RNG seems to be favoring him at the moment. Mm -hmm. But you know, Annabelle, if Annabelle has Violent on her, then she has multiple chances to just kind of do like Orion does. If she can right. Violent proc and then you use her first skill and sleep, then she gets another turn. If she sleeps another, she gets another turn. I've mm -hmm. been in battles where she literally went down the line and slept everyone. Absolutely, yeah. And this is going to be interesting because we do see Orion on the other side. So there's two monsters that have the ability to just, you know, kind of go off with their first skills. Yes, absolutely. I definitely still think this match could go any way. Um, we know Annabelle has such a strong sustain, and as the match goes on, her heal is only going to get more potent. Yes, they will lose HP, but the way RTA works, Annabelle actually scales really well into the late game. Yes, absolutely. And that That is one of the reasons why Annabelle is so big in RTA, because it scales so well. If you can sustain and last till until it starts to deplete HP and raise attack, not only does she hit harder, but her heal is going to heal crazy amounts mm -hmm. and i absolutely love the fact that ken xxy decided to bring in a konamiya a nat 2 unit mm -hmm. into this there's no nat 5 restriction right now right if right you can look on his side he has no nat 5s there mm -hmm. 
and now Doom is left with all Nat Fives. So this is this this plays an amazing role on this shows you that you don't necessarily need these OP Nat Fives to win an RTA oh, match, right? Indeed, yeah, it really comes down to the tactics and strategy. As you saw, you know, with Charlotte, they're getting taken out so early on. Um, that's so much damage that Doom isn't going to be able to put out all of that at the hands of, you know, a Nat 4 Icarus. Granted, she is a Dark Monster, a rare Nat 4, uh, but still her base stats, you know, are nothing super special. So it's definitely, it just definitely is, like you said, it's testament to the fact that you can really bring um, a solid strategy in it, even if you don't have the right monsters, you know, the Nat 5 monsters that everyone thinks you need to pull it off in RTA. Uh, as Ken is proving right here, you can still get a solid combo going. I mean, he's able to keep his health sustained, get frequent turns, keep CC on the opponents, all with Nat 4s, 3s, and 2s. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, if you think about it, the differences between Nat 5s, Nat 4s, Nat 3s is honestly just the base stats. Nat 5s mm -hmm. base stats are higher than Nat 4s and Nat 3s and so on. But mm -hmm. if you can get the good runes, the godly runes, you can give it to a Nat 2 in Konamiya, and Konamiya will do you wonders. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So this it's is just... down to a 4v2 right now. Yeah, it looks like with the silence on Annabelle too. There, it looks like Ken's going to be able to bring this one home and push a uh, push for a match three, which is is a very interesting turn of events after how things started out here. I'm really excited to see the conclusion of this now. Yes, th th this bodes well for a very exciting ending right now. Mm -hmm. um, because again, remember, if you're just tuning in, there was a little mishap in the beginning where Doom had the ability to go ahead and kick ken xxy out of the tournament on a dq but decided to go ahead and allow that person to play on and now he just <laughs> lost match two so now match three is coming can doom pull off the victory and not have an upset happen right here oh well, looks like we're going to be seeing some different units on the side of doom he comes out with a fire monkey right right on the second pick there and I absolutely think that Fire Mo Monkey is an amazing pick right there. Along with the Raccoonie, you have now two fire units that can really help you out against this strong water heavy team on Ken's side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another um, another monster we see Doom taking. It seems as though he's taking, with the Annabelle again, monsters that scale well into the late game. Because that's another thing that the Fire Monkey does well if he can last, you know, get those stacks up. Uh, so paired with uh, a right. Oh, it looks like looks like Fire Monkey might be out of here. Yep. Okay. Oh wow. So we aren't gonna okay. see the monkey today. And and Wusa getting banned. You know, as as we could expect. So because... on Doom's side, where do you see the damage coming from? Um, it's looking like almost gonna be like last match after he lost the Charlotte. Uh, you know, Annabelle being innately uh, built off of attacks attack power. Uh, she's it looks like gonna be the primary source again of damage on his side. You know. Um, none of the other monsters he has are really known for doing damage, so he's going to really be trying to just sustain and outlast in this match. Absolutely, and he, and he also paired her with a couple of attack bar boosters in Raccoonie and Orion, so mm -hmm. I'm imagining that he's planning on trying to not only sustain, like you said, but also make sure that you get a bunch of turns, so where you lack on, a, on, on attack power itself, you're making up by multiple attacks, so it starts to add up. Yeah, very good point with uh, with Rakuni and Orion there with the attack bar boost, and then the heals on both Praha and um, and Annabelle. He will definitely be able to keep his HP up as well as keep getting frequent turns. And if he's able to get that to a point where you know Field Mars isn't able to take them down with one hit or something like that, uh, even with all of the freeze from Varad, it might not be enough. Absolutely, absolutely. This is gonna be interesting. Do you agree with Doom going after the Icarus first? Um, I think, y you know, as the match goes on, um, Icarus with the, uh, you know, a lot of people think Icarus gets weaker as the match goes on, but everyone's, you know, everyone's losing 10% of their HP. So effectively, she's going to take out the same chunk of health as the match goes on. So I think, you know, as we see Orion go down right here, Icarus is able to, uh, to definitely put out that much damage pretty much any point in the game in RTA, even after the HP starts decaying. So I think Icarus is a really smart choice because she does recover, you know, all of the damage she deals with that third skill as well. Yes, very, very good point. I don't know though if I, I think if I'm fighting this match, yes, Icarus definitely, but maybe, maybe exactly what do there, 
I would honestly think about taking out, as crazy as it sounds, taking out that Nat 2 in Konamiya. Because mm -hmm. Konamiya is cleansing. Like, that, that's allowing mm -hmm. you to sustain. And if you take that one sustain away as quick as you can, maybe you might have a chance. Yeah, very good point. And then with the research, too, you know, we saw him just giving that turn to the Varad there. Uh, with monsters like Icarus that have a, a proc after they use their uh, their third skill and then, you know, getting a research from Konamiya, that's effectively reducing the cooldown by two turns. So, you know, you're right. I think that Konamiya might be a might be a smarter first target here. But honestly, there's so much control coming right now. Yeah, and, and as you we just saw uh, the turn before, Konamiya is actually on violent. Mm -hmm, so... Mm -hmm. That makes it even more scarier because it's a nat 2 and those skills already have low cooldowns. Now you also throw in the fact that you're violating. Wow, mm -hmm. that's and then scary. Theo violence too. Wow, yeah, this is a... Uh... This took a crazy turn of events because it looks as though Ken XXY might have just punched his ticket Ooh. to the third round right there. <laughs> oh, wow. That is... That is unfortunate for Doom right there. Cra crazy match. This is uh yeah, this is what it's all about. Looking at the looking at the pick and ban, you know, it was really you couldn't really foresee what the outcome of this match was gonna be. Um but I think that what, what did it for Ken was as you said, that Konamiya um, being on violent I'm sure helped, but he had you know, he had the cleanse and then the attack, you know, research or cleanse, basically every single turn, one of those two things was going on. So he was keeping everyone's health up. He was able to give that research, you know, that attack bar to whoever needed to take the turn. If he needed to nuke, he could give it to Icarus. If he needed to do the AOA freeze, he could give it to Varad. Uh, very, very smart picks and very good use of a Nat 2 monster on the side of Kin. Um, well done to both contestants. That was that was some good summoners war right there. Yes, that was that that is what it is all about right there. We love the, the sportsmanship that Doom went ahead and he had the opportunity to kick Ken out for messing up again. But, you know, instead of doing that and winning, you know, winning the match by DQ, he decided, you know mm -hmm. what, I'd rather try to win this match the right way. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it turned the wrong way. But, hey, hats off to you. I'm not actually going to take my hat off, but hats <laughs> off to you. Doom, congratulations for making it this far. Congrats to Ken for moving on. And we are jumping straight into the next match between Devil's Reaper 94 and Mini Love 15. Wow. I can say this looks like it's going to be a quick one. Um, no matter which way it's going to go. Uh, we see Lucian. We see Megan. We see Orion. We see Bernard. Uh, the double C Emperor from Mini. Yes, you see, you see, you're seeing some strong attackers here. In, wow. in this in this match so rather than going for a more control cc look it looks as though although many with with child being kicked out with the okeanos and poseidon many is also mm -hmm. leaning towards that cc and it looks as though he will get the first turn with 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 bernard and orion going through unless devil's megan is ridiculously fast mm -hmm. and let's not count out spectra as well because right because spectra has one of the fastest base speeds in the game yes indeed yeah i think that um this might be this match this entire match might be dependent upon this first turn right here yes yes agreed absolutely agreed let's and see here we go that bernard gets it's that gonna first be bernard move. Yeah, the, the double C Emperors, they, they sync so well together. Um, their kids, you know, the second and third skills on each of these guys, Okeanos and Poseidon. And what Once they get going. And what a unlucky break right there for Devil, getting four, oh. team, four team stun, four team defense break, full AOE oh, <laughs> attack yeah. bar reduce. That could not have gone, abs like literally could not have gone any worse for Devil right there. It looks as though Mini Love 15 is already taking it down <laughs> and taking the first match. Unfortunately for Devil, and it, 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 I hate to say this war, but it looked really easy for Mini Love. Yeah, no, definitely. I think if I'm Devil right now, I'm thinking I need to get a, I need to pick Bernard this match. I need to take that Bernard away. I need to try it, you know, get get a, a couple turns in, get try and make something happen because uh, you can't do much when you, your monsters can't even go. Absolutely great point. You need you need to try to get rid of because you see he brought both Bernard and Orion. So mm -hmm. if you get the first pick, you might want to think about taking that Bernard first. So at Absolutely. least at the very least, you only have to deal with Orion. Mm -hmm. 
looks like. We are just waiting momentarily until the match gets started. It looks as though we are diving right into the match right here. Here we Second go. Second match between Devils Reaper 94 and Mini Love 15. Mini gets that Bernard. first move and takes that Bernard <laughs> right away. The question is, does Devil have Orion? Doesn't look like it. Doesn't. Goes with the same, you know, he's taking the Spectrum, the Lucian again. If Mini takes Orion right here, I don't think there's a whole lot Devil can do to assure first turn now. He's going to have to try to take something that can outlast all of that stun and AoE CC on the side of Mini. The question is, is what does he have? Oh. And there comes the Vela Jewel. That, now, that... how fast can that Vela Jewel be? <laughs> and is the Vela Jewel on wheel? Right, right. Can and even if he's on wheel, can he resist Okeanos's um reset? Because Okeanos will punch through that wheel. Yeah, this will be this will be interesting. Um if if the will runes aren't there on Vela, it could be a very similar match to the last one that we just saw. But if he's able to uh to outlast and maybe maybe cut in and get a turn and cleansing up that immunity up, um this one could definitely go differently. Looks Agreed. like it's going to be water and fire against water and fire, too. I actually like the pick of Devil picking uh, Bella Jewel's leader skill for 50% more HP mm -hmm. for fire to try yes. to survive. Because if you can get through that first barrage of punches, mm -hmm. you might mm -hmm. have a fighting chance. Oh, for sure. Yeah, he's oh. he's playing smart right now. Bella Jewel is not on wheel. And the stuns. Uh, okay, so he was okay. able to resist. Here we go. This is it right here. Is it gonna? Ooh, there's the Not defense break. Not looking good with the defense break. Yeah, though. we got, we got. And he's stunned from. Oh, and then stunned Chow's gonna go. Everyone. Oh, oh no. reset on Bella. Chow's about to drop the hammer. Yep, there it is. <laughs> so wow. unfortunately, it just looks like Devil is just overmatched against Mini Love 15. Mini Love is looking very strong right now. Mm -hmm. um move, looks as though unless something absolutely crazy happens it looks as though we'll move on into that third round where you don't know who he's fighting yet because on the other side they still haven't fought their match right but this is absolutely crazy how quick mini love was able to do this and with the units that he has it looks as though they are synergized very well Oh very yeah, well. absolutely. Um, I think he was very prepared. Uh, if you know, if not for this this particular round, then the entire tournament, because we did see him um, in the first match as well. You know, he just really brought it. He he was quick with his picks. It seemed like he knew what he wanted to do, uh, and he knew what monsters he wanted to choose together. Usually, the, his second choice monster came immediately after the first one, as if he already knew you know exactly how things were going to go. So uh, he's he's very well equipped for this tournament, and I'm ex I'm excited to see what he does next. Absolutely, absolutely. We just want to take a quick break here and say welcome to everyone who was in chat. Mm -hmm. Jessa, Ken, Kitty Cat Kale, Shuzilla, Doom, Athena, Iron, everyone that is in chat, welcome. We enjoy you guys being here. I hope that we are doing a great job bringing you this content. And without any further ado, we got the next match going between OJ Flores and You Fail X Me. As you can see, War, You Fell X Me has that Visioneers logo up there. So yep. he is part of our <laughs> guild. So we do know about him. I'm we not do. too sure, uh, or at least I'm not 100% on OJ Flores. But I do know that he was in my tournament, my first RTA tournament. And man, he did pretty well. He didn't make it all the way, but he did well. And with these units he's picking right now, very strong. Yeah, absolutely. You know, right out the gates with the double C Emperor comp, following it up with Feng Yan and Ganymede. That is four very, very solid RTA monsters right there. Uh, they work well together. They work well on their own. Uh, this is, And then, you know, we got, of course, the Mo Long and Rakan on the side of OJ absolutely, Flores. Absolutely, absolutely. An interesting pick with the Fire Panda there, too. I think, I don't think we've seen him yet. Um, no, Fire Panda is not, you know, one of your more, you know, um, used units in RTA. But mm -hmm. who knows, maybe OJ Flores has him built a certain way that allows him to be able to use him here. Remember, he does have a lot of, of uh, CC and um, uh, with the defense break and the, and the heal block and the glancing and the slow. He has a lot of debuffs on his side right now. 
So could that bode well here for OJ? What are you thinking? What are your thoughts looking at these teams right here? Um, I'm thinking uh, you got you know you got Rakuni and then you got Megan. Um, kind of unclear on who's gonna go first. Uh, that will give a little bit of an advantage. But the way both of these teams go, um, no one no one's going down. You know, right on the first turn. Uh, j there's just a lot of bruisers and tanky units here. So I'm thinking we're gonna see a little bit more of a longer match this time. I'm curious to see what happens. It looks like Poseidon's the only one on Will, and Megan is gonna get that first turn. But uh, with the 20% attack bar boost, is anyone here going to cut in? Clutch stuns on both Rakuni wow. and Okeanos. Now, you, uh, Rakuni is going to cleanse it and go because that's just what he does. Um, what do you think? If you were OJ, do you think you would have tried to bring in a Tessarion or someone that can Oblivion since you have both the Wind Panda and Rakuni who both have passives? Um, I could have. The only thing... Um... Uh, you know, this is where a lot of Guild Wars have taught me this. When you're facing Rakuni and the Wind Panda, if you Oblivion one of them, um, like if, you, for example, if you Oblivion Feng Yan, uh, he can cleanse himself, Rakuni can cleanse it off, and then uh, you can Oblivion Rakuni, you know, but typically people have Rakuni built on violent or at least really quick, and uh, the way Rakuni goes, you know, he can he can sometimes just get right out of the, right out of the Oblivion and, and jump right back into it and start uh, cleansing that, other people too. That is a great point. Great point. Great point. Yeah, as so far as... Go ahead, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, as far as uh, avoiding CC, taking a Rakuni alongside Feng Yan, um, it makes Feng Yan effectively um, nearly impossible to keep Oblivion locked down, you know? Yes, absolutely. It looks as though this match is pretty even starting off right now. No one has the clear advantage at the moment. There's more, you know, debuffs on the side of OJ Flores, but they're still mm -hmm. all pretty well health. With, with with HP and with that fire panda you can at least put some heals on them and you know for the most part you see a lot of Rakans built on vampires so I'm not sure I wasn't mm -hmm. I did not remember I don't remember seeing if his health went up or if he stole any HP um, but if that Rakan is on vampire you also don't have to worry about him he can sustain himself because he hits so hard Right, it doesn't look like he's healing off of his hits. I think he must be on um, on more of a damage build, it looks like. So, OJ Flores went with the with the big skill from Mo Long right there onto Poseidon, trying to get that Poseidon out. And that Okeanos Ooh. is dangerously close right now. Rakuni coming in though, healing him up a bit. <laughs> and then violent proccing, so could this be the uh -huh. drop of Mo Long right here? Oh wow, someone's someone's going down soon. And there, there it is. There no it long is. is gone, so it is now a 4v3. And we got Rakan just got reset too. So once that stuns up, he will be able to collapse, but he's not gonna be able to use his second skill and get that attack and immunity up. So he is a little bit vulnerable right now, being the lowest one, probably the next target here. I don't I don't know about you, but I'm hearing a lot of noise from the audience right now yelling out Jenga from Rakan. They're looking for that collapse <laughs> proc, but unfortunately he was Rakan stunned up. Falls. Mm -hmm. He stays CC'd with those Poseidon wow, and Okeanos. Stunts. And Poseidon looks to be on despair as well with the stuns. So not only are the silence, but you're also stunned. So we get a quit out by OJ Flores. You fail me getting the first wow. victory there. Great match. It was a yeah, stalemate for a while. It. What do you think about that match so far? Yeah, I, uh, for a while you couldn't you couldn't tell you know until that Mo Long went down. You really there was there were lo monsters that were low on both sides. You really didn't know which way it was going to go. And then as soon as Mo Long went down, Fail took that and just started building momentum. And um, and he carried that into the late game of that match really well. Uh, once Molong was out of there, Rakan was pretty much stunlocked from that point on. There was very little that OJ could do. Absolutely, uh, that was a great match, though. Yes, that was that was. I would I would say that was probably in my top three favorite matches so far in this tournament. That was yeah, definitely. They, they were both going hard at it in the beginning, and like you said, it just eventually overwhelmed um, OJ, and he ended up falling to you, fail X me. Mm -hmm. um, but we see as we get into the second matchup here between these two individuals we see that both of them are starting off the exact same so is oj gonna do anything different to try to change up the strategy it looks as though you fail me is taking his time picking his unit oh he's gonna go with an orion maybe and decides to bring out that orion 
And then Perna, too. Some very good picks there, leaving his third element open. He can pretty much do whatever he wants with his last pick now. As, and that's the... I think... Honestly, I think that's the scariest part right now on OJ's part. If I'm OJ, mm-hmm. you have no idea where he's yeah. going with this. He can bring out a Zeratu for all you know. Like, yeah, yeah. He can okay. literally bring anything to the party anything. right now. It's looking like OJ's going going about with the same team here. He's got the Fire Panda again. And then the yeah, Megan. The exact same team. He, okay. he feels confident about this. Maybe, maybe he saw something there that, you know... Made him think, okay, I saw a chink in the armor. He he beat me, but I saw some wrinkles that I can slide into mm-hmm. and maybe push them out. So who knows? We might see something here from OJ that we're just not seeing on our end. He knows his monster box better than we do, obviously. Absolutely, yeah. He could, uh, you know, seeing Fail mix it up, maybe he's thinking he'll be okay with taking the same comp against this team because it's a bit different. Uh, we do see Rakuni again, so there's... Only two elements on the side of fail. He didn't even need to use his, you know, his full three. Exactly. Sometimes <laughs> they just say, you know what? I don't even need all three. Mm-hmm. I got this with two elements. Maybe, maybe we should have made this two element max. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take notes. We'll take notes. Yes, we will take notes for our next tournament, and hopefully, hopefully, some other, some other bigger, awesome, stronger. And everybody, maybe we'll have like a 62-person tournament, right, War? Oh, ooh, ooh, <laughs> yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Sky is the limit. <laughs> Sky is the limit. So here we go, match two between OJ Flores and You Fail X Me. You Fail out the gate with the stun on the Molong. Ooh. Also with the full team slow right there. This is going to be... OJ has to be careful here, here that this does not go quick. Yeah, there's a lot of momentum. Um, we got all of them stunned up, too. Fails really got that momentum going already. This time, he's got Perna, too, so there's going to be a lot more damage coming. Um, some defense breaks, too, thanks to that fly fly from Orion. Rakan is really low. Wow. And, and I, then Perna with the procs. Oh. And I am hearing from the crowd right now that they are looking for a 300-person tournament, Warlock. Ooh. What do you think about that? <laughs> uh, what I think about a 300-person tournament, JD, is that we might need to hire some uh, some underlings. <laughs> absolutely, if we're make absolutely. Like that <laughs> so, congratulations, you fell X me. You punch your ticket to the third round. Uh, GG, good job. Congrats to OJ Flores for making it this far. Um, great matchup. What did you think about that matchup right there, War? Um, I thought, I thought, you know, I thought it was those were great matches. I thought it was a bit interesting that OJ took the same team. Um, you know, it would have been a, 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 more odd if he would have taken it into go, fighting the same team. But um, because fail, uh, you failed me was able to mix it. You mix this team up a little bit. I guess OJ must have thought the team might work against that second comp differently. Um, but you know, uh, it, it was shown that uh, fail definitely. You know, either had the rude quality, had the tactics on him, or, or whatever it was. But uh, I, I am curious as to why OJ went ahead and, and uh, didn't change anything going into that second pick phase. Like, like I said, he might have felt com- comfortable and confident in that, and it just didn't work out for him. So we are going live into the fourth matchup tonight between D Saint nine oh five and Shockster four three five. Two individuals that were both in my previous RTA tournament. <laughs> two <laughs> individuals that have numbers in their names. This is going to be a crazy matchup, folks. Buckle up, sit tight. Here it comes. You know, we're seeing a lot of the a lot of monsters that we just saw in the last match from OJ Flores and you failed me. We got uh, Poseidon and Okeanos. Pernas back. Looks like Orion's back. <laughs> well, you know, nowadays, nowadays, even in the sports world. Mm-hmm. Athletes on different teams are practicing with each other in the off season. So who knows? Maybe D Saint and and um, OJ Flores hit each other up and was like, "Look, let's practice our RTA." Mm-hmm. And then they ended up using the exact same units. Who knows? We'll never know. Secrets yeah, secrets are between friends. And since they were both in the tournament, my tournament before, maybe they had some secrets going on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so unless I'm mistaken, it looks like that first turn might go to Bastet. Uh, it dep- depending on what the will runes look like, Okeanos might be able to make something happen off of that. Yeah, absolutely. This is going to be an interesting, fun matchup right now. I'm, I'm excited to see how this goes. I know for sure I've seen Shockster in action. 
He is very strong with his units. He knows how to use oh, them well. Wow. And it could be devastating. Quit. That Sana goes down the proc really fast. Two, the proc 2 from Theo. <laughs> really fast the right there. Oh, and the reset. Goodness. This was an absolute obliteration right here. Carnage. <laughs> absolute obliteration carnage right there well said <laughs> so shockster out of the gate like i said i know shockster is a strong uh competitor mm -hmm. what did you think about that matchup right there yeah you know and i i did i, I didn't notice i forgot she was there i just saw the i saw the pastet and, and then the the okeanos and i started to think you know if pastet goes first okeanos is going to get a chance to stun uh, you know, I mentioned something about the will runes, but yeah, she she was there, so that didn't even matter. She would just strip those right off. Okeanos was able to stun everybody. Uh, very little that D Saint could do against that. Absolutely. So D Saint takes a page out of the notebook from before in previous rounds and decides to take away that Theomars from Shockster, mm -hmm. and then brings on Leo. Oh, I actually like these this move right now by D Saint. Definitely mixing mm -hmm. it up and. Taking away a damage de dealer from Shockster, how do you think that will play well for D-Saint? Um, you know, I think that it, it could help his survivability. I do think it's interesting that right after that, Shockster went ahead and fired back by taking the Poseidon away. Yes, so D-Saint... And then the Shibu, so they're, they're stealing each other's units here. They absolutely <laughs> are. D-Saint is locked in with water, wind, and fire, while Shockster has fire, water, and light. Mm-hmm. Who is that last pick going to be by Shockster? He's down to 12 seconds to pick. Oh. Oh, we have we have a mess up right here, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, it is. It is. That is yeah. four units. Oh, no. Four different attributes. So we have a quit out. Shockster has now one warning and has a... If he messes up again, he could be DQ'd. Just, just in case you guys aren't aware right now, the second round is no more than three attributes so the fact that he took that lucian last that was his fourth attribute so unfortunately he messes up but he gets another shot if he messes up again he could be dq'd and the and how how well he played in that first match yeah. you do not want to get dq'd at this moment <laughs> That oh is, yeah, absolutely. that is not the way you want to go out this tournament. Am I right, Warlock? <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. No, yeah, especially with that first match under his belt already, that would be a tough way to end it. Fortunately, we you know we gave him the second chance just in case it was you know a mishap, which it does sound like it was in this case, just a an accidental pick there. So absolutely, absolutely, and and you know what. We, we definitely, we talked about this as starting this tournament, you know, with the restrictions. You had to give people a chance to mess up because there's no restrictions in RTA. You can right. bring whatever your best units are. So when we started talking about this, we were like, you know, if we're going to have restrictions, we got to give people a chance to at least mess up once. Right. To mm -hmm. at least have that my bad moment and yeah, recover when... from it. Yeah, when you're when you're in a tournament, and you're playing live, and you're picking your monsters. Your instinct from RTA, you know, before the restrictions may take over. There's nothing we can do about that. So exactly, exactly. <laughs> so now Shockster is taking his time, making sure he does not make that mistake again. Because again, like I said, you do not want to get. Oh, what just happened? I'm thinking. I'm thinking they they needed to pick. Remember, they needed to pick the same. Oh yes, it, yes. It's like yeah, Poseidon same. went to the, the other wow. side. Wow. So now it's, uh, and that was D Saint that took the, the Poseidon there, so it looks like we'll have to go back into it. <laughs> so, at this point, at this point, I, you know what, Warlock, we're going to go to you live to talk alone so that I can talk to the individuals in the war room. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so it looks like, guys, what we've got going on here is we had, uh, we had a mistake on each side of this. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to go ahead and go back into this match. Uh, make sure the contestants are informed that they, they need to pick the same teams that they had before the first mistake was made uh, so that we can go into this fairly the way it was going to be, you know, before that Lucian pick, uh, the Lucian pick that wasn't supposed to be there. But um, it looks like we're trying to get them back in the room now, making sure everyone is, is fully aware of that. Uh, this is one uh, mistake on each side now, though, so we, we got to hope that it doesn't happen again because we're, you know, Next up is the DQ, so we gotta hope that uh, things go well here with this pick. Yes, 
Good luck to both. You have to pick the exact same and make sure that there's only three attributes. So, Shockster's last pick has to be different. It has to be either water, mm -hmm. fire, or I can't remember the, if he had picked a different one. Or light. He it was light like Kabila, yeah. Picked Kabila. Kabila. And then something else. Something else yes, is yes. light, water, or fire. Exactly, exactly. So here we go. D Saint is probably trying to recall what he picked. He's down to one second. Megan and Perna. I believe that might have been the way he went, but I'm not 100% sure. I think so. It looks like would it have? Would they have been at the far left of his monster box too? You know, the last chosen monsters, because it yes, looks like they auto right. picked for him. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure how that works if it's a quit out though. Oh, and then the Leo. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it looks as though he picked the same five, just in a different order. Yeah, so I think that this is okay. It looks like they've got, you know, Shockster did take the Kabila again, went with Konamiya as the last choice. An interesting pick up. The double Sea Emperors and Konamiya, uh, the potential to get a lot of control going with that. Yes, absolutely. I do like, because I do remember saying on Shockster's side, I like the Leo Theo pick right there. Mm hmm, mm hmm. So Leo, of course, like everyone knows, is going to get that first pick. It looks as though Kabila might have resisted, though. Yeah, here comes the, uh... oh, he's going to go ahead and try to strip, and he does get the increase on Perna. Perna is almost done now. If, if Poseidon can do enough, which he can, there goes Perna. Wow. Interesting. You do not see a lot of times Okeano's going for his second skill rather than the Reign of Stones. But it yeah, works he... out because Perna drops, and now you get the full team stun right there. Brutal. Yeah, this is uh, that was really well played. He knew Poseidon was going to come in next, so if he was able to get that immunity off of Perna, then he could, you know, at the very least, take his attack far away, maybe stun him. We know this Poseidon is on despair, but he just got the kill right out the gates. Uh, another really quick match here. Wow, yes, Leo... Leo drops right there, so an amazing match right there by Shockster. Wow. Go ahead and getting that victory and securing his spot in round three. Congratulations. So now we are down to the final match of the night between Shoezilla and X Wiggles X. <laughs> what do you this think you expect to see out of this matchup um, right here? I expect this to be explosive simply because we've seen Shuzilla, we've seen Wiggles play before. Uh, both of these guys um, are on their game. Both of them have good strategies, good monsters, um, a lot of very diverse uh, box of monsters too. You know, look at this. We got Bellagio Ganymede and Ciara as, as the first. Wow, leader. straight out of the gate with the Nat 5 bombs right there interesting pick right there amazing pick right there so now wiggles is taking his time to try to think about what he's gonna do right here wow he's got three fire here so um wiggles we see in a position uh, where he can you know he can again go whatever he wants in this last spot which is a nice spot to be you know because shuzilla can pick whatever he wants here he just he doesn't know what to counter with that with the last pick that uh, wiggles is gonna have so absolutely if i was in this turn if i was in this round in this tournament i would do the exact same thing i would take mm -hmm. only two attributes for the first four picks so that i have my chance to pick whatever i wanted on that last one. Ooh, the tiana from shu that's shu's got a pretty solid team there though with the speed lead the tiana gemini a uh, reset from from Ganymede and then the attack bar reduction from Charlotte. Yeah, Shuzilla definitely he he definitely came out strong here with that with that uh team. But Wiggles oh. is not is not to be reckoned with either. Bringing that Bella Jewel, Sierra, Perna, that is a scary team as well. And now you look, you have two fire units against three wind units. Yeah, definitely. Uh, even if Gany gets banned out of here, the only um, I mean, Charlotte's not going to be able to put out a whole lot of damage against all this fire, so it's going to come down to Azaria as far as taking down Perna and, you know, the Perna and Vela Jewel, and with, with Praha there, that could prove to be very tough to do for Shu. Absolutely. Shuzilla definitely is not on the attribute winning side at the moment, mm -hmm. but you never know how RNG is going to shine on you. You know, it, it, could, it could be your best friend, it could be your worst enemy, so here we go. 
Wow, full oh. team defense break with the stun on Perna. Wow, and then we, um, Charlotte was able to reduce a lot of attack bar on Ciara and Praha there both, and then Ganymede coming in and taking him right back to zero. Yes, yeah, so Velajul looks as though was able to resist the attack bar reduction, but was not able to resist Ooh, the increase. Stun. And with the triple stun, Wiggles is definitely ha has his back against the wall right now against Shuzilla. Yeah, there's Ganny resetting himself. Uh, it looks like Gemini. Wow. So yeah, there's there's a healthy amount of stuns too that um, the Shuzilla is still gonna have a chance to get off because of the monsters of, of uh, Wiggles that are down. And now with the sleep on Praha too, he might be able to get another round of stuns in here. And Shuzilla definitely looked at this and said, I ain't scared of no fire unit. <laughs> I'm bringing my wins. Yeah, no kidding. Charlotte and Bella Jewel stays locked down with another reset of his skills, wow. so cannot cleanse anyone. And again, the Ganymede with the proc, probably does have... able. Does he have it now? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm it waiting looks as though, to see. Yes. He's going to ventilate. Oh, wow. This Bella Jewel is having a rough <laughs> go at it right now. And Charlotte's going to be up again here soon. She, I think she might have one wow. of her AoEs now. She might have one of her AoEs again now. Do you yeah, even there it is, the Guardian Angel. Point. Oh my goodness. This is an amazing turn of events right here. I what I honestly with the with the attribute element advantage, I expected Wiggles to have a slight advantage, but it looks as though this Ganymede, man, Ganymede will beat anyone he wants. Almost almost on complete lockdown. Um right from the gates having having a Gemini there to take those will runes off and then getting you know, the luck, lucky early stuns with Charlotte followed up with Ganymede reducing everyone's attack bar. Uh, yeah, Wiggles was was pretty much... There, he couldn't even really do anything there. He could barely take a turn. And when he could, you know, he had his, his skills on cooldown from Ganymede. Yes, that was that was a rough match right there. Constantly remaining CC'd <laughs> right there on Wiggles' side. Shuzilla played that very well. Amazing match right there. Definitely something I was not fully expected to see. Yeah. But hey... There it is. Wiggles makes the move and takes the Ganymede <laughs> from Shuzilla, which could be the smart move right there, making sure you are not going to be resetting anyone this oh, way. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that was uh, almost almost immediate that he did that. Wow, there's an Oberon. Oh, there it is. That is the, you yeah. know what's crazy? That is this... Was Shuzilla the one who brought out the Oberon I in the think, first round? I think round? he was. I was about to say there, like the first time. But I think I know we've seen Oberon already. I think it was Shu that had him in the okay, first okay. round. Okay, okay. I was gonna say there's yeah. no way we have two people with, with yeah, Oberon yeah. in this yeah. tournament. <laughs> wow, but yeah, no. This this Oberon, we've seen this Oberon. We know he does well. Uh, we also know that Shu, um, even if it looks like he's on the uh, the bad end of the elemental advantage, that doesn't really seem to hold him back too much. Very true, and Wiggles decides to round off his team with Camila right there. So bringing fire, water, and wind, the three main attributes right there, into a match with a couple of light units and one crazy OP light unit mm -hmm. <laughs> that you don't know what he's going to do. That is a yeah, scary team could... right there. Oh, and then there's... Okay, wow, was... and then to bring out the Lucian at the end. <sighs> Last pick, Lucian. Wow, this is going to be... I don't know if this is. I mean, this is probably going to be a fast match, but um, it it could it could still go either way. Yes, this is this could definitely go either way, but man, there's a lot of damage coming from Shuzilla's side right now. <laughs> yeah, if he's able to even get you know one of those nukes moving, that might be the momentum he needs. Uh, looks like Ganymede's going to go first. There's only only Will runes on Oberon too. Who's he going to hit, Lucian? I okay. think that's the smart move to do. Make yes, sure Lucian certainly. cannot amp you. Wow. Oh, but Vela. But oh, Vela is a... That is why I have wanted a Vela Jewel forever yeah. right there. Yeah, right there. That's uh, that's heavy. Ganymede resets himself now. He's going to be able to do the ventilate again next turn. Oberon's trying to take out Gany here. It's not quite enough, though. But uh, that, Can Charlotte do it? Yeah, that, that, that Gany is dangerously Ooh. close right there. Charlotte isn't able to get it. Uh oh, I think this Ganny might be might be going again here. You gotta get the what wait is reckless assault. There it is. On Lucian. Lucian's out. So here we go. Can you take out this Oberon? 
He hits Charlotte. Charlotte resists. She gets to go, but she's been reset, so she can only use her main attack now. Goes oh, from sleep on Oh, unlucky break right there for Wiggles. But Oberyn is gone. There it oh. is. So we are yeah. down to 4v2. It's looking strongly in favor right now for X Wiggles X. Yeah, with uh, Vela Jewel and Camilla there, I don't think Shu's going to be able to do a whole lot with his Charlotte, unfortunately. Able to put the attack slow on Charlotte right there. Ventilates Mo Long to get Reckless Assault back up. This match is not over. Gemini could go crazy here and start stunning everyone. We will have to see. Mm -hmm. When will Vela Jewel's Sanctuary be up and Ganymede is down? I don't know if they have enough damage to take out that Camila. And with the Clutch Immunity Sanctuary right there, that might, that might just seal the deal for Wiggles, but we will have to see. Do you think there's enough? Ooh. Gemini is about to go down. Ooh, Charlotte yeah, is there. gone and Wiggles will take that match. Pushing it to what the an third. amazing wow. match right there. What 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 is what is running through your mind right now, Warlock, when you see that oh. finish right there? I think both of these guys are probably sweating. We got their palms sweating right now because um, the, both of those matches, you know, couldn't quite tell when, where they were gonna go from the pick and uh, the pick and band phase, but um, after seeing after seeing them both play, I, it's very clear that they both have the units needed to win this third match. Uh, it's really going to come down to this next pick and band phase. Absolutely, um, I think it see, comes down all to this right here. Yeah, we see Wiggles get first turn again. He, he, so he snags that Ganymede right away. Shuzilla responds by going a little bit differently and taking Tiana this time, uh, followed by. Oh wow, there's Laika. Okay, haven't seen him yet either. So I don't think definitely very different team being. Uh, being brought by Wiggles in this third matchup right here. Mm -hmm. You haven't seen these two yet. Shuzilla yeah. is using units again that, you know, is going to give him turn advantage, attack bar reductions, mm -hmm. uh, sleeps with, with, with the water succubus. So same kind of composition, but it looks as though Wiggles is going a completely different direction. Yeah, we see him bringing the Praha back, but with, yeah, with Bastet there, um, and then he's taking Camilla too. So with... Yeah, taking Camilla. Yeah, with Bastet there, it uh, looks like he's going to try to go early. That could be partially. Um, you know, we did see uh, the early Tiana and Gemini from Shuzilla, so maybe that factored into Wiggles picking Bastet. Absolutely, but, um, absolutely. It looks like there still will be a speed lead on the side of Shuzilla, so he might be able to snag the first turn here. Uh, wow, is that... It is a Lagmaron pick that going is. for more damage. That is... That you know what? I must say, I am a huge fan of Lagmaron, and I think mm. that he is vastly underused right now in RTA. The fact that his second skill is such a devastating nuke ability, his <laughs> third skill is a is a full team, can be a full team stun and attack buff or attack debuff. I think that was an amazing move right there by Wiggles to go ahead and ban that Lagmaron because mm -hmm. he probably knows that that could devastate him right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. If, if Lag got one crit squall in there, that could be enough to just drop one of the units that Wiggles took uh, instantly. Absolutely. So here it is. Tiana gets Tiana that first, first move. So can you sustain and, and survive? Bastet resists. But How we do have... Charlotte about to probably probably use oh she goes for the stun instead and does get it on Ganymede and then the sleep on wow wow had Here a lot of space CC. right there in that water succubus <laughs> yeah yeah no kidding I was kind of expecting to see Charlotte use her third skill there I'm very surprised to see Toy Knight instead but you know it worked Ganymede stunned for two turns now and there's the Wind Guardian Angel oh man Definitely, I would I would have to say early early on right now, Shuzilla is looking very strong here. Yeah, he's got his momentum going. Um, Bastet is able to get that shield in there. That's gonna help. But with that Gemini, you know he's taking stuff off constantly. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Can, Can we... Ganymede get a turn here? He's gonna and need there to. There he is. He's going yeah. now. Reset for go. Charlotte. Smart Gets move, everything. I think. Ooh, not a whole lot of debuffs from yeah, the... Yeah, uh, very uh, unfortunate right there. now from the Bastet. But that Camilla is still full health. 
full health with the shield up, yeah, she's going to be tough to take to take down, even if Shuzilla is able to, you know, knock all these people out of here, get rid of Ganymede and Praha and Bestead. That Camilla is probably going to be there for a little while. Yes. So, of course, as we've seen all tournament and all through RTA throughout the world, Ganymede ventilates <laughs> and violent procs again. So he's going to go. It's almost, <laughs> it feels almost like a 100% chance when you ventilate, you're going to go again. Yeah, no kidding. We see Camilla go ahead and take out Azaria there, so it is now 3v4. Um, Wiggles is starting to get uh, get the momentum. Looks like going back in his favor, but wow, the stun, the despair stun on the first skill from Charlotte uh, deprives Ganymede of another there turn, and then the he goes Ganymede. down <laughs> Oh no! Tiana. So wow. here we go. It is 3v3. What an amazing final match of this night. Oh my goodness. Yeah, this is this is crazy. That stun from Charlotte changed everything. Uh, the Ganymede go, um, wasn't able to get a last turn in, went down to the AoE from Tiana. Now it's effectively 3v3, and Charlotte's going to reduce more attack bar. Praha's going to be getting close to kill range now, too. Yeah, you got to be careful with that. Praha is dangerously close, but does is her third skill ready? It is Oasis Blessing. So Shields. that is going to buff up Praha, and there goes There's, the daydream. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, Shuzilla is looking dangerously in trouble right here. But I will say, all three water units on Wiggle's side, so you have the attribute advantage. Gemini mm -hmm. goes down, though. Ooh. So it is back to a 3v2 right here. Can Shu do enough to stay alive here? It's going to really come down to what Charlotte's able to pull off here. Does get another stun. Um, that's fortunate against Praha, you know, keeping her heel cool down low. But uh, with Camilla there, you know, the, doing what she does, Charlotte already at half health. I think I got to say, this is looking pretty good for Wiggles right now. Um, yeah. Shuzilla is going to need a lot of procs, a lot of despair procs, a lot of sleep procs, extra turn procs, you know, from Charlotte. Uh, if he's going to be able to pull something out here. And then he gets stunned too, unfortunately, there from Praha. That might be it. Yeah, once Charlotte drops, this match is over. Yep, and, and there's the Camilla stun again. With the proc yeah. right there. And wow. X Wiggles X looks as though he has just punched his ticket what? into the third <laughs> round. What an amazing wow. fight right there. Down to the that last. That was absolutely turns. amazing. What did you think about that, Warlock? I thought that was awesome. I thought that that despair proc on the first skill from Charlotte on that Ganymede, on, that, um, on Wiggles' Ganymede at the end there, that turned it, uh, that made it, that shook the whole match up for a second because it, it could have gone any way. Um, and it took, you know, it took a little bit of stuns and procs on the side of Wiggles to get it going back again. But once his Praha got her daydream off, uh, it started to look pretty good for Wiggles. I think he realized he had a pretty good grasp on the victory. Uh, he just needed to stay focused, make sure he kept his focus on the Charlotte. You know, he kept trying to stun her with whatever he could. Uh, it looked like that worked out for him. But I got to say, uh, both of you guys, uh, Wiggles and Shuzilla, very well fought. Um, those were some great, great games. What an awesome end to the night, huh? Absolutely. And I think, I think you hit the nail on the coffin there. Once Praha was able, once Shuzilla was not able to take out that Praha for a heal, Mm -hmm. That kind of sealed the coffin and sealed the, the fate right there for Shuzilla because Camila is so annoying with her passive. Once it got up to full health and and um, mm -hmm. and a Bastet got up to full health, it was almost going to be near impossible right there for Shuzilla to make a return right there. Indeed, indeed. So, let's take a look at this bracket. <laughs> so, with the fights tonight... Ken XXY moves on to the final match between Drunk Dragon, and that is oh, going to be man. a humongous match right there. Oh yeah, we got humongous. two heavyweights going at it right there. Both uh, both have a lot of uh, different monsters. We know there are some similarities on each side, but I know both of them have re relatively different monster boxes. Uh, so with that with that no passives limit, this is going to be these are going to be some good matches this round three here. Yes, so. Here it is. These are the matchups set up now for the third round of the RTA. We got Ken XXY versus Drunk Dragon, X Wiggles X versus Mini Love 15, and You Fail Me, You Fail X Me versus Shockster 435. Now mm -hmm. let's just remind the viewers in the third round, the rules now have changed. So we've had different rules every round. So do you want to just briefly go through the third round and, and kind of give the viewers a, a, a reminder of what the third round, what they're expected to see in this third round? 
Yeah, for sure. Uh, so the third round rule is probably our most straightforward rule. Um, it is just no passive skills. Um, there have been some questions, so I will explain it a little bit more in depth. Um, this only extends to skills that are labeled as a passive uh, with the parentheses in the end. Examples would be Kamun, Theomars, you know, um, your uh, Pisama, uh, any of those monsters that have an, a, a skill that is only activated, you know, when something happens or on every turn. Um, so certain skills, like let's say uh, Dark Dragon Attack, Faye's um, her third skill. When that skill is on cooldown, Faye has a chance to, to counterattack. That is a passive effect, but it's a, a passive effect on an active skill. Dark Dragon skill still has its own cooldown. You have to use it, and it's not labeled as a passive. So the only monsters that you won't be able to use will be monsters that have those passive skills. Uh, in parentheses, labeled as a passive. Absolutely. So there will be no passive being able to be used that, that says passive, as Warlock just explained, in the third round. We are going to try to bring that third round tomorrow between these individuals. I do have the video for the, the matchup between Drunk Dragon and Electra. Unfortunately, that video or that, that fight had to be recorded earlier today due to some time restraints and things going on personally. Um, I do have the video. Un unfortunately, I don't know if, if I could not figure out how to get the audio working. So that video will be put in this video um, to go with it when, when it gets uploaded to YouTube. So once all these matches is in you on YouTube, it will be on there. I just cannot get the audio working because we you know we commentated just like we do here on that video but the audio seems to not be properly functioning with obs right now um but the video does have audio so do not do not worry you will be brought that battle once it gets uploaded to youtube um but these are the final six competitors ready for round three and no passives we will hopefully bring that to you tomorrow warlock do you have anything else to say um, as always, thank you guys. I know we had a lot of new faces in chat tonight. Uh, JD and I were busy, you know, hosting and stuff. We can't really um, address everyone, but thank you guys all for coming. Uh, we really appreciate the support. Um, yet again, another awesome night of fights. Uh, it's it's been so much fun hanging out here with you guys, uh, putting this tourney on. It's been so much fun seeing what the competitors are doing, seeing everyone's minds work, uh, seeing how their tactics are and everything. I'm, I'm really enjoying myself. I hope you guys are too. Thank you, JD, as always, for having me. And I'm really looking forward to seeing you guys hopefully tomorrow for some more action. Absolutely. And just the last little thing, if you can go ahead and follow right up there, the Warlock SW on Twitch. He streams all the time. And then also, if you're here, you might as well hit that follow button, right? You're already on the channel, JD underscore mm -hmm. the underscore Gamer86. I would really appreciate it. Warlock is trying to get to 100 followers with uh, by the end of the month, and you're already at, what, 98? 98, we need two more. Two more follows two more. to get to that. And then I believe you said that you're going to do a, a gift card giveaway if you reach there, that goal, right? There will be, yes. Uh, I was shooting for 100 followers by the end of the month. The earlier in the month that I hit that 100 will dictate the size of the gift card. Um, we're only a week in, and I'm only two followers away. So Absolutely. Uh, it's going to yeah. be a big one. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> and then myself, I'm at, I believe, like 186, 187 followers. So my goal mm. is to try to get to 200 by the end of this month. And the same as Warlock, if I can get reach that goal, there will be a small giveaway. Um, so, yeah, hit us both up. And then also, X, it Wiggles X, who is a part of the tournament. He is a part of our guild. He is also a streamer. Dasini1, D-A-S-E-N-I. And then the number one, he streams Summoner's War and is on YouTube as well. And I am also on YouTube as, at JD the Gamer. No underscores, no 86, just JD the Gamer. And I know Warlock will be soon as well. So mm -hmm. if you can hit us all up, that would be wonderful. We are going to continue to bring you guys great content like this, tournaments like this, chances to win prizes. There will be prizes for this tournament, first, second, and third place. So if you want to be a part of my next, our next tournament, I said my because I'm used to doing mine, <laughs> but if you want to be a part of our next tournament, hit us up. Maybe we'll hold one quicker than usual, and maybe we'll get mm -hmm. 50 people. Who knows? Oh, yeah. And if the more people, the better the prizes. Absolutely. So I really appreciate everybody rocking with us tonight. Um, this was the second round of the RTA tournament. Stay tuned tomorrow for the third round around the same time, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And hopefully we will see you 
tomorrow for the third round of the RTA Fall Classic Tournament. Thank you for joining us, JD and Warlock, and we're signing out. Peace. Peace.